Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So for today's case, we're gonna be covering the case of Megan Huntsman. And today's case, wow, this one is shocking. Now, I first came across this case way back in December. It was probably the end of November when I was researching Lacey Spears. Remember her? Uh-huh. So Lacey Spears being a mom that kills her child, a part of that research I was searching for, like mothers that kill, like why do mothers kill? What drives mothers to that? Like blah, blah, blah. And that is when I came across the case of Megan Huntsman because I came across an article, mother kills six babies. And I thought that it was a clear clickbait title like you would wouldn't you I clicked on it and it turns out that it wasn't clickbait and it turns out that it was completely true because in 2014 Megan Huntsman was charged with killing at least six of her own babies so we're going to get into all of that today and obviously due to the nature of today's case we are going to be talking about the killing of babies i am going to have to give a warning on this case because i know that children babies are a big no for some people so just be aware that it is going to be hard to hear this case. But before we get on to today's case, we do have a sponsor. So let's just quickly jump into that. So I just want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is ExpressVPN. So if you haven't heard me talk about ExpressVPN before, well, it's basically just an app that will keep you safe and secure when you're online. And you're probably thinking, why do I need that? Like, what is the point in that? Well, without a VPN, hackers or tech companies can see exactly what you're doing online. They can track your activity. They can even sell your data without a VPN you are basically exposed to anyone. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is basically like using your phone without a passcode. You just don't do it. But ExpressVPN encrypts and reroutes all of your internet traffic through their servers so your internet activity is kept hidden and protected. But ExpressVPN doesn't just keep you safe and secure when you're online because it has an amazing other benefit as well because ExpressVPN allows you to change your location so you can watch thousands of TV shows and films on streaming services like Netflix, like BBC iPlayer that you wouldn't normally be able to watch. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but you will be from this moment on, but I am a huge fan of the US office. It's like my favorite TV show ever. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay, What's the procedure? stay it's just a TV show that is comforting to me. It picks me up, it makes me happy. And I always go to the US office when I just need like a little bit of a break, a little bit of a mental break and a reset. I actually watch The Office quite a lot when I'm researching these cases because these cases are pretty dark and I just need something happy to watch. And the US office is just my go-to program for anything like that. And it is on the UK Netflix. But what I wasn't aware of is that it is not available on the US Netflix which is crazy. How are you guys coping? So if you're in the US and you don't have anywhere to watch The Office, download ExpressVPN, change your location to the UK. If you have a Netflix subscription, voila, there you go. All seasons of The US Office will be available to you. You guys can get three months of ExpressVPN for free when you go to expressvpn.com forward slash Danielle or just go to the link in my description box. Thank you again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. I honestly don't know what I would do without ExpressVPN, like it has unlocked so many more TV shows and films for me. And obviously the added benefit that I'm safe and secure online. So I don't know what I would do without ExpressVPN. But I also just wanna thank every single one of you watching right now, because truly without all of you, I wouldn't get opportunities like this. And now let's jump into today's case. And quickly before we jump in, today's case, I have so many questions about. There is not a lot of clear answers as to what happened. And obviously I did as much research as I possibly could. You guys know this but there's not always clear cut answers to absolutely everything. So I'm gonna need all of you to put on your detective hats, help me out, give me your thoughts and theories on possibly a few things in this case. I'm obviously gonna give you my thoughts as always. So yeah, let's just jump in. Megan Huntsman was born on the 27th of February, 1975, making her a Pisces. She grew up in a suburb of Salt Lake City, Utah, where she lived with her parents, Blaine and Joyce Huntsman. Megan also had some younger siblings, but I don't really know the details of that. So there's that. But Megan was the oldest as far as I'm aware. And the family have just been described as a middle-class family, 
relatively normal. They were quite a religious family as well. They were part of the Mormon religion. And considering they were quite a religious family, like I don't know how much religion actually plays into this case because there was not really much um, to go on whether her religion does play into it. And I'm not an expert on religions. I don't know much about the Mormon religion. And Megan has been described as just like a happy, normal child. There's no evidence of like any mental illness, like nothing like that. The only thing that people really noted about Megan that was probably a little bit unusual when she was younger is that she was an incredibly private person. And I mean, think of a private person and take it to the extreme because that was Megan. She kept everything to herself. She was very shy, she was very introverted and Megan definitely lacked confidence and she was very quiet. She had a very small friendship group. She had friends, she didn't have any problem making friends. She had a really good friendship group. She would have sleepovers all the time, but she just lacked confidence. She was shy and she was incredibly private. She was just one of those people that kept her cards very close and I mean very close. She never used to tell people what she was doing, but she also didn't really tell people what she was thinking. Like she literally kept everything to herself and it's a personality trait that she carried through with her when she became an adult and it's the personality trait that plays a really key role in today's case so keep that in mind Megan is a private person to the extreme. When Megan was in high school, she did get close to one person though. She did kind of open up to one person and that was a boy called Darren West, who is a pretty key character in today's case. Now, Darren was a few years older than her. So he was in school as well, but he was a few years older. I don't know how old he was. There wasn't really much detail on him, but Darren was one of those kids that was a bit of a loner, but the bad boy as well. Like, do you know what I mean? Like he was always getting into trouble. He was always late to school, missing classes. He was that kid that liked to party, drink, smoke. He was definitely like that lone wolf rebel kind of character. And Megan was really attracted to that. She was really attracted to the loner bad boy kind of vibe that he had going on. And from that moment on, they started a high school romance. And their relationship was pretty intense because when Megan graduated, so by the time Megan graduated, Darren was already in college because he was a few years older. So when Megan graduated, Darren proposed to her straight away. And that was in April 1993. Megan was 18 at that time and they got married. But there was one secret that Megan was keeping from everyone. And I mean everyone. She was even keeping this secret from Darren. And that is that she was pregnant. I know she's keeping that from Darren, who was the father of this child. No one knew about this pregnancy. For some reason, Megan had decided to keep this pregnancy to herself. We actually don't know why. Could it just be the fact that she was a very private person? She didn't really want to share this with anyone. We don't know if it was because of religious reasons. Maybe she was just like young and scared. I mean, she's 18. She's very young. She may be confused about like what to do because she's 18. Like, was she going to keep the child? She had a lot of decisions to make, but she didn't tell anyone. And we don't really know why. But either way, Megan was pregnant and she managed to get full term without anyone knowing. Mm hmm. I know. So she was nine months pregnant and no one knew. No, no one knew. She's nine months pregnant and no one knew. I mean, it can happen. It can because some people just don't show as much as others. So it can happen. And Megan was clearly one of those people that didn't show as much. And Megan did wear a lot of baggy clothes. Maybe that explained why no one knew that she was pregnant. And she did kind of keep to herself a lot as well. She was very, very, very introverted. So not a lot of people saw her either. So maybe that was why she was able to get away with being nine months pregnant and no one knowing. And then finally, pretty much at the end of her nine months being pregnant, she was probably about to go into labor, like max a week out from going into labor. She finally decided to tell Darren that she was pregnant Oh my God, can you imagine how that conversation would have gone? Hi, can you sit down a minute? I've got like some news to tell you. 
I'm pregnant, but I'm not just pregnant. I'm nine months pregnant and I'm about to pop. And then shortly after telling Darren, like I said, I don't exactly know when she told Darren. I know it was near the end of her nine months. So it could have been a week, could have been a few days, could have been a few hours knowing Megan. But then she gave birth at home on her own. Again, what the hell? She gave birth at home as if it was the most normal thing in the world. <laughs> She just went up to the bathroom. I think she sat in the bath and she gave birth. And when she gave birth at home, this is when the rest of the family finally found out. And again, their reaction is not known, but I don't think it takes a genius to figure out what their reactions would have been. And believe it or not, I actually knew someone who did this. Well, I didn't really know them. I knew of them. And I am not joking. I'm not going to go into too much detail, obviously, but they were pregnant and they didn't tell anyone. They didn't tell the father until they were six months pregnant, I think. And then they didn't tell anybody else until after they had given birth. Mm -hmm. And they didn't show at all, like no belly, nothing did not show. They didn't give birth at home. They gave birth in a hospital, but it's a very similar situation. So I know 100% that this is possible. I know 100% that some people just don't show. You just don't have a clue that they're pregnant. So now Megan and Darren, they're obviously married. She has just given birth. She gave birth to a daughter, by the way. And now they're going to move into a new home. So the home that they move into actually belonged to Darren's parents. And Darren's parents decided to give Megan and Darren their home because they wanted Darren, Megan, and now their newborn baby daughter. They wanted to give them a home for the family to live in. And Megan was like 18, 19 at this point. And after Megan and Darren moved into their new home, Megan found work as a cleaner and also a babysitter. And just a side note, I think it's really ironic that she got a job as a babysitter, given what she does in this case. Like, thank God she didn't harm any of the babies that she was babysitting. And Darren was working in construction to also support the family. And then it wasn't long, and I'm talking not long at all, Megan falls pregnant again. And guess what? She doesn't tell anyone again. I know. How? Like, come on. You did it once. Like, why? Literally the exact same thing happened again. She went the whole nine months and didn't tell anyone. Nobody suspected a thing. She clearly wasn't showing again. She didn't even tell Darren this time that she was pregnant. Like, she didn't even tell him before she gave birth. No, she gave birth at home again by herself. And then she told Darren Imagine coming home from work and there being a new baby in the house. Oh, by the way, I've just popped out a baby this afternoon. You literally cannot make this stuff up. And then after Darren found out, then the rest of the family found out. So you see what I mean? Megan is a private person, but she takes it to the extreme. So Megan had given birth to another daughter and their first daughter was only about a year old at this point. They had two very young children and they were both young as well. And they were living as a family of four now. And the two of them, Darren and Megan, are still going out to work, both of them, to earn money to support the family. And it goes well for a little bit. This little family of four, everything is going great. And then when the children turned two and three, this is when things started to go downhill for both Megan and Darren. And this was down to one thing, and that was drugs. So remember that Darren was kind of like that bad boy. He liked to party. He liked to take drugs in high school. Well, this didn't stop. Even though he was now an adult, even though he now had two children, this still didn't stop. And his drug taking had now gotten to quite a dangerous level. But now it wasn't just Darren because Megan had also become quite a heavy drug user. Megan had always liked to party. She always used to drink, um, but it was never like a big deal. It was never like a lot or anything. She was just a normal young person. But now she had started to take meth. It's thought that she was given the meth by Darren. And um, if you don't know anything about crystal meth, um, just know that it completely, oh, completely screws you up. And it wasn't long until Megan's 
little dabbling into meth because she was just taking it here and there in the beginning, but it wasn't long before it developed into a full blown addiction. And I'm talking a serious meth addiction right now for both Megan and Darren. Both of them were extreme heavy users. And it got to the point that they were both spending hundreds of dollars a day on buying meth. Both Megan and Darren eventually lost their jobs and their drug addiction was just getting worse and worse. And Darren actually started to manufacture crystal meth himself to earn money because he was dealing meth. He also decided that he was gonna start manufacturing meth so there would be a constant supply for both himself and Megan. And in the middle of all this, they still have two young daughters who at this point had become an afterthought. Drugs came first. Megan and Darren would do drug binges. They would completely neglect both children, but also they were very aggressive towards each other. I don't think that they were aggressive to the children, but obviously I cannot be sure. I don't think they were though. And obviously this alone, them being aggressive towards each other is still an incredibly horrible, toxic environment for those children. That is still abuse in itself because all of this arguing, all of this quite violent aggression, all of it would take place in front of those two children. And during all of this, during Megan's addiction, her mental health also took a decline. This is very, very common with meth addicts. She was suffering from severe anxiety and depression. She was also suffering quite a lot of other side effects from taking meth, such as psychosis, paranoia, compulsive behavior. The drugs were also starting to have an effect on Megan's physical appearance as well. Like she's only in her early twenties right now, but her skin, it has wrinkled so badly. She's losing teeth. Her hair had started to fall out. It was getting really Really, really thin. She looked like double her age. And then on top of all of this, it's thought, and I do want to stress thought because it hasn't been confirmed, but it's thought that Megan was also being physically abused by Darren because she was regularly seen with black eyes, bruises. So Megan had fallen into this deep hole of drugs, depression, and abuse. And at this point, Megan just couldn't find a way out of her situation. It is now 1996 and Megan falls pregnant again. And just like the first two pregnancies, Megan decides to keep this to herself. She does not tell anyone. It's almost like it's just a habit for her to keep everything to herself, even pregnancies. But the only difference between this pregnancy and the first two pregnancies is that now she's addicted to meth. And Megan continued to use meth throughout the whole pregnancy. So Megan went the full term, she went the full nine months and didn't tell anyone and no one found out. And then Megan gave birth again on her own, in her own house, and she didn't tell anyone and no one found out. With the first two pregnancies, she obviously told Darren just before or like like literally just after, like during the birth. So Darren kind of always knew like as the birth was happening, but she didn't tell Darren this time. With this third pregnancy, Megan just went into the bathroom, went into the bath and gave birth on her own. And then after giving birth, she made the decision that she did not want another child. And no one knows why she came to that decision. I think we can probably all assume with some confidence that it was because of her drug addiction, but we cannot say for sure. But Megan came to the decision that she was going to murder her newborn baby. Megan put both of her thumbs on the baby's neck and just started to push down until the baby was no longer breathing. And then following this absolutely horrific murder, Megan took the baby's body, she wrapped it in towels, covered the towels in trash bags, and then tied the trash bags with electrical tape. And then she placed the body in a box. She then took this box and she took it down to her garage and she hid the box in her garage. She actually hid the box amongst some Christmas ornaments, decorations, basically the area of the garage that no one goes to other than once a year. So no one would discover it. And then she went back into the house. She cleaned up the bathroom because obviously she's just given birth in there. And then she carried on as if nothing had happened and no one discovered a thing. No one knew anything about this. No one, no one knew. And what is crazy to me is that Megan does not live alone. She has two daughters. Yes, they're young. So you can obviously understand why they didn't know what was going on. 
but Megan is also living with Darren. How does this go undetected? How is she pregnant, given birth and murdered her newborn baby and no one knows? It's just crazy to me. So Megan just goes back to the way her life was before. She is still suffering with her drug addiction. She is still depressed. She still has severe anxiety and she's still raising her two daughters in an extremely volatile household. And then it wasn't long. I hate that I'm gonna say this. It wasn't long until she was pregnant again. And I think we know where all of this is going because she does the exact same thing again. She doesn't tell anyone, she keeps it to herself. She gives birth alone. And then she also decides that she no longer wants this baby either. And she also murders this baby in the exact same way that she murdered the first baby. She conceals the body in a box. She hides the box in the garage. She cleans up after herself because she's given birth in the bathroom and she goes on with her life as if nothing has happened. So Megan has now murdered two babies and it's now gone from a one-off tragic event to a pattern of behavior. This is not just an irrational thought, a mother that is suffering with depression, anxiety, she's also addicted to drugs. It's not just an irrational moment anymore because it's happened twice. And unfortunately, it doesn't stop there because over the next 10 years, from the ages of 21 and 31, Megan got pregnant over and over and over again. Each time, tragically murdering her baby after she gave birth on her own. There was one exception when she was pregnant because she gave birth to a stillborn, but I can guarantee you if that baby wasn't stillborn, she would have also murdered that one as well. And she did usually give birth on her own. However, there were two pregnancies that she gave birth and other people were in the house. During one of those births, Darren and Megan were there just watching TV with Darren's brother and his sister-in-law. And then Megan just got up and said, oh, I'm not feeling too well. I'm gonna go have a bath and then I'm gonna go to bed early. But in actuality, she was going to give birth and then murder a baby. And Darren was just like, oh, okay, whatever. How did they not hear? I mean, I've never given birth before, okay? But um, from what I do know, it's pretty loud. So for years, she was carrying out all of this in secret. And it's just really hard to even wrap your head around how is she doing this? How is she being pregnant several times, carrying the baby full term and no one knowing that she's pregnant. But in every pregnancy, Megan wore very baggy clothing. She also kept to herself as much as possible. And there were a few times where neighbors would think, oh, is Megan pregnant? She kind of looks pregnant. But then because there were no babies, the neighbors just kind of came to the conclusion of, oh, I guess she wasn't pregnant. And because Megan did keep to herself a lot, she didn't leave the house that much. I suppose you can kind of wrap your head around how other people didn't know that she was pregnant, but how did Darren, who lived with her, how did he not know? And she also has two daughters in the house as well. And obviously they're very young when this whole thing starts, but Megan is doing this, being pregnant and then killing the baby. She's doing this over 10 years. So at the end of the 10 years, her daughters are like 12 and 13. Yes, still young. However, they are at an age where they would be able to notice if their mother was pregnant. And apparently there were a few times where Darren questioned Megan and said, are you pregnant? And Megan would just brush him off and say, I'm not pregnant. There's nothing going on. But there were a couple of pregnancies where Darren did notice that she was pregnant. But obviously because there was no baby, Darren was like, what happened? And Megan just used to say that she'd had a miscarriage. And Darren apparently didn't question this. I mean, there's no actual evidence that Darren was involved in any way. But when I hear things like that, I'm just like, hmm. Was he really not involved? Mm. Darren has said though, um, later on after everything did come out, that at the time that this was going on, he was so messed up because he was obviously also addicted to meth. 
he was so messed up that he wouldn't have noticed. He didn't really notice anything. So I suppose that does explain it. Mm, I don't know. And after the murders, Megan did the exact same thing with each of the bodies. She would wrap the body in towels, then she would wrap the towels in plastic bags, then with electrical tape around, and then she would put the bodies in a box, take the box to the garage and hide the box in the garage. So there were literally piles of boxes with dead babies in the garage and they were piling up. So in the middle of this 10 year period, there was actually one baby that Megan did keep. And it was in the year 2000, it was four years after the first murder. And it's not actually known how many babies she had killed up until this point, um, because we just know that it happened over a 10 year period. We don't actually know when each baby was born and when they were killed and everything. We don't know those dates. So it's 2000, four years since her first murder. We don't know how many babies she's killed up until this point and she's now pregnant. And this time she decides to keep the baby and this was one of the pregnancies that she was unable to conceal. People found out. And this was the only reason why she kept the baby because too many people realized that she was pregnant. And this was the only pregnancy that people actually noticed that she was pregnant. So she must have been showing more for this pregnancy. That is just sick. It's disgusting. I cannot even imagine being that child because obviously she did give birth to another daughter and Darren and Megan kept that daughter. So they now had three daughters. I cannot even imagine being that third daughter that they had. Because if people hadn't found out, there is no doubt in my mind that Megan would have also killed that baby. So Megan and Darren now have a third daughter and she is approximately six or seven years younger than the two older daughters. This pregnancy was actually pretty healthy despite Megan being addicted to meth. However, the birth of her third daughter I don't even know if it is her third daughter, but the third daughter that she kept, it didn't change her behavior at all because over the next six years, Megan continued to fall pregnant, give birth and then murder her own baby. And by 2006, Megan had murdered six of her own babies. Obviously there was also that one baby that was stillborn. So there were at least seven babies in that garage. And I say at least, and that is because Megan has actually lost count how many babies she gave birth to and murdered. So it's 2006 and this is when a significant change happens because Darren is arrested. So remember that Darren is a meth dealer and manufacturer while the DEA had caught up with him. And in 2006, DEA agents turned up to the house they searched the house and arrested Darren. And Megan throughout this whole search was panicking because obviously the DEA agents have just showed up to search the house to gather evidence against Darren. She's thinking, oh my God, they're gonna find the babies in the garage. And I cannot believe I'm saying this. I cannot believe this is coming out of my mouth, but the DEA agents, didn't find the boxes. They clearly did not do a thorough job on searching the house. So Darren was sent to prison for dealing and manufacturing meth and he was given 12 years. So Megan is just left at home now with her three daughters. And this is a huge change in Megan's life because she now can no longer fall pregnant. Darren was the father to all of her pregnancies and he's now in prison. But not only that, Darren was also basically her meth dealer. She doesn't have access to meth anymore. So her usage of drugs in general just really decreased because she didn't have access to them. So she is just slowly using less and less drugs after Darren goes to prison. So the only thing that she's really abusing now is alcohol. So going forward from the moment that Darren got arrested, Megan stops taking meth. She stops falling pregnant, she stops murdering babies, and she goes on to lead a relatively normal life from this moment on. So I don't know if you remember, but the house that Megan and Darren were living in belonged to Darren's parents because they had given the couple the house to raise their family in. Darren's parents said to Megan that she was allowed to still live in the house even though Darren was in prison. 
The only condition is that she had to stay faithful to Darren. And this is exactly what happened over the next five years. Megan, her three daughters, stayed living in that house. Megan stayed faithful to Darren. And the boxes of the at least seven babies just continued on to be in the garage and no one ever found them. So we're going to jump forward five years now. We are now in 2011. Megan is currently 36 years old. Her daughters are 18, 17 and 11. And this is when Megan starts a relationship with a man called Jimmy Brady. Megan tried to keep this relationship secret because we know that she keeps everything secret. However, Darren's parents did eventually find out about this relationship and they stuck to their word. They were like, yep, okay. You need to move out. You are no longer allowed to live in this house. You had to remain faithful to Darren and you have not. But the three daughters were allowed to still live in the house and Darren's sister, so the three girls, their aunt, moved into the house to look after them. So Megan moves out of the house and she's now living with Jimmy. She's obviously not living with her daughters anymore. She still sees her daughters on a regular basis. It seems like a pretty good situation. Megan is pretty happy with Jimmy. They have a more healthy relationship than what she had with Darren. And it stays like this for approximately two years. And then Megan falls pregnant. However, this time Megan is slightly different because she doesn't try to hide the pregnancy. She tells Jimmy that she's pregnant pretty much straight away. Apparently Megan intended to keep this baby. She wanted her and Jimmy to have a child between them. Um, and then she had a miscarriage. And forgive me if I'm skeptical, but uh, I don't know if this miscarriage actually happened. But this is what Megan told Jimmy. But let's be realistic here. It would not surprise me if she had carried that baby full term, given birth, and then murdered that baby. However, we cannot say. Maybe she did have a miscarriage. We just don't know. All we know is that there is no evidence of this baby like we just don't know so now we go to 2014 darren is released from prison he has served eight out of the 12 years and he returns to the family home where his daughters are living and when he returns home he thinks you know what this is going to be a good time to have a clear out so darren goes about spring cleaning and he eventually gets to the garage. He's going through loads of boxes, he's sorting things out, throwing things out, you know, the normal cleaning, and he gets to uh, the boxes. Several of these boxes were wrapped in electrical tape, and he was like, what could possibly be in these boxes? He got one of the boxes and he opened it, and he was met with, uh, a horrific sight. He found the remains of a tiny little baby in this box and he was horrified, completely horrified. He immediately phoned to the police and then he also phoned Megan. He phoned Megan to confront her. He was like, what the hell is this? Like, what is going on? And Megan is panicking and she comes up with this story. She was like, I had a stillborn, like I didn't know what to do, I panicked. So Darren at this point told Megan that the police were on their way and Megan pretty much has a full on breakdown because she knows that the rest of the bodies are gonna be discovered. And this is when she turns to her current boyfriend, Jimmy, and asks him for a gun because she wants to end her life. But Jimmy does not give her a gun. And eventually at some point, the police have obviously discovered the bodies in the garage. They turn up to Jimmy's place and arrest Megan. The police take Megan in for an interview and they tell her like, we have found the remains of seven babies. And there is evidence to show that one of those seven babies was stillborn, but then there is still six other babies that have died from suspicious causes. Now, it seems that at this point, Megan didn't really see the point in hiding. It's like, it's pretty obvious that she's killed these babies and she comes out with a full confession. Megan told the police that over a period of 10 years, she had given birth to a number of babies. Like I said earlier, Megan has even lost count. And then every time she gave birth, she murdered those babies. But other than that, Megan couldn't really go into more detail because she said that her memory is a bit hazy from that period of her life. And Megan was herself convinced that there should be 
eight or nine bodies in that garage, but she couldn't be sure. But the police only found seven bodies. So I, I can't tell you, like, I don't know. Maybe she did kill more. It was very clear from the bodies and the injuries that the babies had that six of the bodies that they had found, the babies had been suffocated. And one of the bodies of these tiny babies was found with a hair tie around its neck. One of the things the police wanted to know the most was why, like, why did she do this? But they really couldn't get much out of Megan. So the reason that Megan gave as to why she had murdered at least six of her own babies is that she was worried that she wouldn't be able to take care of them because of her meth addiction. And she didn't want her babies to have a bad life, which just, really makes me angry because she didn't even give them the opportunity at life. She had so many options available to her that she could have done. And after her confession, she was charged with six counts of murder. Because of this, she could actually be facing the death penalty. Originally, Megan did want to fight the charges, but she didn't really have that much of a defense. So she did change her plea to guilty. So the death penalty would be removed. So the judge gave her the maximum sentence available, which was 30 years to life. However, it is thought that Megan will probably never get out of prison. Now this case is just a really weird one. Do you see what I mean? There's not really that many answers. So the reason that Megan gave that she did this is that she didn't want her babies to have a bad life. She was worried that she wouldn't be a very good mother. This really annoys me because there are many options available to her. And in the state of Utah, there is the safe haven law which allows anyone to take a baby to a hospital in Utah anonymously. No questions asked. The hospital will take that baby. The baby will be in the protection of the hospital from that moment on and the baby will be put up for immediate adoption. So Megan could have done this. She could have taken all of her babies to the hospital and the hospital would not have asked any questions. They would not have investigated her. No prosecution, it's all done anonymously. She had the luxury of that option being available to her and she chose not to take it. And that is just one of many options that she could have had. I mean, the best option would have been birth control. And then some people have speculated as to how much did her meth addiction play into this? How much did that contribute to the decision making? Because meth can have a significant impact on cognitive function, especially in long-term users. And Megan was abusing meth for 10 plus years. Was Megan suffering from some sort of psychosis, which again is another common side effect from long-term meth use. And when I was doing my research for this case, I was trying to find other cases like this because I honestly have never heard of anything like this happening before. So I was trying to search to find something similar to this case. And unfortunately, if you search something like meth addiction killing babies, very sadly, there are examples of meth addicts killing babies or infants, but there was still nothing like the case that we have covered today because all of those stories that I was coming across in my search, they were bursts of aggression. It was like a psychotic break. It was a snap. A lot of the babies, children, infants that were killed in the stories that I was coming across were killed in a more violent, a more aggressive way, which is the complete opposite of Megan. When Megan killed her babies, there was no aggression there. There was nothing like that. The way Megan killed her babies, it was very cold, calm and controlled. So while I do think that her being addicted to meth obviously played some kind of role, I don't think it's to blame. Like, I don't think you can blame that. Just because you're addicted to drugs, you're addicted to meth, it doesn't make you murder at least six babies. And also in this case, I find it very hard to believe that Megan was pregnant at least seven times and no one knew. Like I said, I knew someone that did this, but to do it seven times and no one knew. And then also you've got to think about, okay, so she's been pregnant seven times. She's delivered those seven babies herself. How has she never had any kind of complication in the pregnancy and in the birth? Like how is she able to do that? Not going to the doctors, not going to the hospital, not having any issues, being able to just carry on with her life as if she's not pregnant? How? 
how 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 but this story is horrible i've never come across anything like this before like megan killed six innocent babies they never even got a chance she killed every single one within minutes of them being born i just i just can't wrap my head around it it's so incredibly sad but i really just hope that the three daughters that darren and megan had even though they obviously had a lot more than that but i just hope that those three are okay especially the third daughter and yeah let me know all of your thoughts theories and opinions i want to know all of them because there's not many answers to this case also don't forget to let me know your case suggestions in the comments because i always want to know what you want to hear next thank you again to express vpn for sponsoring today's video and i'll see you all in my next video bye